Hello everybody, welcome to A British Audio File. If you're new to this channel, my name is Taron. Regular viewers will know that I've owned my Exposure 21 preamplifier and 18 Super Monoblocks for over 20 years. When did I purchase them exactly? I think back in 1998. So why is it that I've hung on to them so long? Are they simply the best amplifier that I've heard around this price? Well, yes and no. To tell you the truth, they're a little bit tubby in the bottom end and a little bit more top end extension wouldn't go amiss either. But it's the mid range where the magic is, at least for me anyway. They have a clarity and a richness of tone that's able to unearth little textures and nuances of information that leave most other amplifiers in their wake. And then there's a the sound stage, not only is it only immensely wide, but it's immensely deep and it really draws you into an immersive experience. That's generally considered the preserve of much more expensive tube amplifiers. When I reviewed the Exposure 2510 back in 2021, I was really pleased to find out that essentially it's just a scaled down version of its ancestors that I own. So why would that be a surprise? It's the same brand, even if it is two decades apart. Well, Exposure was founded by John Farlow in 1974, although I do recall him telling me that for years before that, he was producing guitar amplifiers for the likes of Pink Floyd. Around the turn of the millennium, it changed hands, and it's been Tony Brady who's been responsible for designing the amplifiers ever since. The 2510 is testament to the fact that Tony has stuck to John's original design principles. Not does it only share a very old school minimalist aesthetic, but inside it has the same KISS philosophy. Keep it simple, stupid, and just use high quality parts. Today I'm reviewing its big brother, the 3510. Surely it's gonna be more of the same, just the 2510 on steroids. Okay, hold on. This one threw up a few surprises, so let's find out how I got on. The Exposure 3510 retails for 2,250 pounds in the UK. It's a full width unit at 440 millimeters, or 17.3 inches. Available in a light finish they term titanium and a black finish which has always been a more popular choice with exposure amplifiers. You'll observe that the 3510 is quite a bit more substantial than the 2510 that I previously reviewed, measuring 115 millimeters, 4.5 inches, as opposed to 90 millimeters, three and a half inches. The 3510 is also double the weight of the 2510 at 12 kilograms, or 26.5 pounds. It's a minimalist piece with a power button, rotary knob for volume, another for input selection, as well as a 6.25 millimeter quarter inch headphone jack. I have to say, I'm not a fan of the inlay around the input indicator LEDs. It looks like they borrowed the fascia of a CD player or is supposed to have an LCD display. In any case, it ruins what could be a beautiful minimalist aesthetic. What I do applaud Exposure for is the optional modules that are available. A DAC board at £410, a moving magnet phono card for £300, or you could specify the moving coil phono card also for £300. There are six line level RCA inputs, one which doubles up for the phono stage if fitted, a tape loop to connect recording devices, two sets of pre-outs, and two sets of speaker terminals that only accept banana plugs. According to Exposure, they sound better than the ubiquitous five-way binding posts. Exposure don't believe in throwing money at expensive billet aluminium CNC machined chassis or ancillary parts. The supplied remote control is functional but plastic and can be used to control other Exposure devices. Where the money is spent is on the inside. I've taken the lid off and turned the unit on its side so we can see better what's under the skin of the 3510. Let's start with that large power transformer from Norwegian company Norotel. There's no VA rating that I can see but it is quite large for an amplifier around this price. And that's the main reason why the 3510 weighs double what the 2510 weighs. There's a large heat sink running across the chassis. That's quite clever, it provides a little bit of isolation for the sensitive electronics from the noisy power transformer. If I can get the angle right, hopefully you can see mounted to that heat sink, eight bipolar junction transistors. And that's double what you get in the 2510. Another reason why this amplifier is a lot more powerful 
rated at 110 watts into 8 ohms as opposed to 75 watts which is what you get with the 2510. There are four of these power supply filter caps from Italian company Kendial that was well regarded. I can zoom in on one of them, hopefully you can make out some of the writing. Each one is rated at 10,000 microfarads, so that's 20,000 microfarads per channel. Not the most I've seen, but quite respectable. And that is what I assume is the preamplifier board. Over on the right hand side you have five of these input switching relays from Panasonic. And the board itself does have some surface mount parts. I prefer to see all full through hole parts because they're generally considered better from a sound quality perspective but it's not always possible. And that is a potentiometer by Alps, the blue velvet variety, which if you're gonna use a potentiometer for volume control, that's pretty much considered the gold standard. There is a board mounted underneath it. Now, hopefully if I can get down and the angle right, you might be able to see that. Yep, hopefully you can make that out. And that does seem to have fully discrete parts. And those are the power amplifier modules. There seem to be two identical modules as far as I can make out for the left and right channels. So that's nice to see. Let's get straight to it. Does the new Exposure 3510 sound like my old 21 Pre and 18 Super Monoblocks? No. Does it sound like its junior sibling, the 2510? No. Now, please don't misunderstand. I'm not saying it sounds bad. It just sounds different. It has superb dynamics and excellent clarity, but a distinctly more forward tonal balance. Let me get into the ribs of it. So I may as well start with the bass. Wow, it has real grip and control and really packs a punch. That's where it gets its great sense of rhythmic drive. And it's able to extract variations in tone that most amplifiers around this price couldn't even hope to unearth. Forget the 2510 in comparison, it's not even close. Now I mentioned that my exposure pre and mono blocks are a little bit tubby in the bass, but that's compared to amplifiers around 5,000 pounds. For them to be bettered, by an amplifier, an integrated amplifier, at just over £2,000 just shows how good the 3510 is in the lower frequencies. You want a more commonplace comparison? You've got it, the Hegel H190 with its 2000 damping factor and its ability to pretty much drive any speaker on the planet is bettered here by the Exposure 3510 when it comes to bass control. It's the mid-range which is gonna divide opinion a little bit here. It has superb clarity, even something like the Yamaha AS1200, which is a phenomenally clean sounding amplifier for around 2000 pounds, can't quite match the exposure 3510 in this regard. So what's the surprise? Well, it's the tonality. It isn't the traditional exposure sound that I was expecting. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of a frame of reference here, literally. Right in the center, I'm gonna place the Hegel H190. That's a very neutral sounding amplifier, very natural in its presentation. And half the amplifiers I review are warmer, richer sounding, or cooler, leaner sounding. Over on this side of the spectrum, I'd place something like the Sugden A21 SE. In between that somewhere, actually more towards the Hegel than the Sugden, would be the Exposure 2510. So what about the other side? Well, right on the cooler side, I'd place the Denifrip stack that I reviewed the Hades and the Thalo, as it stands anyway, as I reviewed it. And the reason I say that is there's some debate that that amplifier stack warms up over long-term listening. It's here on long-term loan, so I guess I'm gonna find out eventually. In between the Hegel and the Denifrip Stag, I'd place something like the Yamaha AS1200 that I reviewed. That's definitely got a little bit of leanness as well. Even that's up for debate as to whether that warms up over long-term listening. The Exposure 3510 definitely leans towards the Yamaha. I wouldn't possibly put it as far as the Yamaha, but it's definitely on that side. That's where it sits tonally. So what does that mean in terms of overall presentation as far as the 3510 is concerned? Well, it's a little bit more forward as far as vocals and lead instruments are concerned. 
It has a reasonable soundstage width, not quite as wide as the Hegel H190, but that is a particular strength of that amplifier. It's the soundstage depth that is lacking, and that's because of its mid-range presentation. It sits in line with the speakers and projects a little bit forward. That gives it a more intimate kind of listening experience. Some will find that more engaging based on their listening preference. The high frequencies are exemplary. There's a beautiful decay to hi-hats and cymbals without any sibilant annoyance. There is a touch of hardness in the upper mid-range though that makes it unforgiving of harsh recordings or partner equipment that has that characteristic. Speak a bit more about that later. Now, I know what I'm likely to get in the comments section. How long did you run it in for? Well, I can tell you that it went to two reviewers, two publications before it came here. So it was supposed to be fully run in. And also it's been run consistently for weeks, at least three, four weeks, I think I've had it here. So I can't bench test everything for six months before I review it, but I'm here to speak as I find. The Exposure 3510 is pretty much plug and play as a minimalist amplifier. There is the option for a built-in phono stage and a DAC, as I spoke about earlier. Now, I don't test phono stages and mine didn't have the built-in DAC, but Exposure's reputation is that they build fantastic phono stages and their built-in DACs aren't bad either. So if you need those options, they're well worth considering. I think it's great that they're offered in this modular form so you're only paying for the features that you actually want. And I wish more brands would actually do this. At all do it, exposure do it. Come on guys, the rest of you need to follow suit. Let's talk about the speakers that I tried it with. It worked with pretty much every speaker apart from my Proax. My Proax were a little bit too revealing in the mid range and unearthed some of those tonal inaccuracies that I spoke about earlier. I'd stick to speakers that are on the warm side of neutral as a safe bet. These are some of the ones that I tried. It worked really well with the sound artist LS35A. This replica of the classic British BBC speaker is known for its warm, rich mid-range. This characteristic was tempered to some extent when partnered with the 3510. Now you could argue, quite reasonably, that's not what you want from a classic BBC LS35A, but it does mean that you could enjoy a much wider remit of music. The Amphion Argon Ones are a superbly detailed, dynamic little speaker with a tonal temperature just a couple of degrees below what you'd consider a natural equilibrium. Sorry about that. That description definitely veers towards the audiophile BS. What I'm trying to say is that it's a slightly cool speaker and a slightly cool amplifier. Shouldn't work together, should it? Well, this is why you can never really tell until you try. It's the strength of both the exposure 3510 and the Amphion Argon ones that are evident. The clarity and the dynamics are stunning with that combination. It's not warm, but not everybody likes that kind of presentation. See those little speakers behind me on the stands? Those are the Dali SE Minuets, a compact little speaker that's suited for near field and small room applications. Now I'm not gonna get into how it sounds, because it only just arrived a couple of days ago, and I don't know until I've completed listening tests it sounds really nice with the Exposure 3510. I thought it was worth a mention. The Exposure 3510 has class leading, actually scrub that, class defining levels of clarity, dynamics, and low frequency grip and control. Okay, so it isn't the traditional exposure sound that I was expecting, but there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. I do feel, however, it isn't the last word when it comes to natural and neutral presentation in the mid-range. And because of that, it does require a little bit of care when it comes to speaker matching. It has the kind of power though, that's likely to drive all but the most difficult speakers and an engaging sonic presentation that's gonna tick a lot of boxes for a lot of people. The Exposure 3510 comes highly recommended. My question for today is what do you think about how sound, should manufacturers go for a house sound or not? I've reviewed two amplifiers from Exposure. They sound different. I've also reviewed two amplifiers from Atoll and they sound very different. Should manufacturers be consistent across their product range or is it quite acceptable to have different designs with different sounds? Share with me your experiences and what your views are on the matter. I'd love to hear about it in the comments section. All that remains for me to say 
is all that social media stuff. If you haven't done so already and you like this video, you like what I'm doing with this channel, and you'd like to see it grow, please hit that like button, please share, please subscribe, please hit that bell notification. Check me out on Patreon for exclusive content, the video chat meetings that we have from time to time and the consultancy services that I offer. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.